what is so important is that we have the ability to heal ourselves in the here and now, regardless of what you have lived through. Over and over and over again, you're going to hear Dr. Ashley and I talk about that, number one, because it's absolutely true. And we need to have that hope because a lot of times we've lived through really difficult things and it can haunt us for decades and decades and decades. Mm -hmm. But when we tap into your psyche in the way where we are able to utilize yourself and your skills in your adult world now, we're actually able to go back and heal those parts of yourself that were actually traumatized, right? Sometimes neglected, sometimes forgotten, sometimes judged, right? Mm -hmm. But we're going to be able to do it in the here and now. And that is going to help you to completely heal from whatever it is that you've lived through. Yeah. All right. So let's start talking about the concept of, of the inner child. Mm -hmm. And the way that I like to work on it is okay if I start, do you mind? Yeah, please do. Mm -hmm. You know, is that, you know, what we want to do in the here and now, when you are ready, and this work oftentimes happens with a therapist, you can also start to do some of this through this educational platform. But what you want to do is you want to invite connection with those younger parts of yourself. And a lot of times they get activated by things in the here and now, okay? A relationship that's hurtful, something that reminded you of a past trauma. Maybe you're working on loving and caring for yourself, but you're really kind of hitting some roadblocks. Yeah. And we want to be able to connect up with those psychological earlier parts to first and foremost, get a sense of what is the state that they're in, okay? We don't want to have a preconceived notion of, of how that child is going to show up or what age that child is going to be, because then we're working on it from our intellectual self, and we're not getting the benefit of tapping into our subconscious mind. Our psyche is going to be what gives us the pieces that are still wounded that is the next piece for you to address. Right. Okay? So oftentimes we can do this through imagery work. We can do this through connecting to your affect and then kind of following that affect to what it's connected with. Um, Dr. Ashley often talks about EMDR and following that path through an EMDR process. And then we want to connect up with that child part. And then just like we've been talking about within your adult self, we want to explore with curiosity what that part is feeling and needing okay and guess what it's going to be from you in the here and now right okay so really a big component of this healing work is about your relationship with that internal younger part in the here and now right and there's good news and bad news with that because sometimes we can step in and do a this in a loving, supportive way, sometimes we start out in a way that repeats maybe the way that we were treated when we were younger, okay? And then we have to work on that before we can step into some healthy healing, okay? Dr. Risha, you want to take it from there? I know that that probably goes into a piece of work that you and I had talked about regarding mm -hmm. if, if that relationship is not in a good place when you start doing this connecting, you want right. to do that? Yeah, I think um, I, I really love the description that you just provided. I think you took a very abstract and complex concept and um, summarized it very, very nicely. And, you know, that definitely is a challenge when I start this work with people. I mean, more often than not, the early experiences of, you know, even acknowledging that there may be a child inside, um, you know, oftentimes is met with um, disbelief, doubt, discomfort, resistance. And I, I don't say that word with any kind of negativity. Um, the resistance makes a lot of sense. And, and then, you know, as we, we start to massage it a little bit more, then I see what, what you were mentioning, which is, okay, so maybe there is a child there and I don't like her. Um, I don't, I don't like this. She's too needy. She's bratty. Um, she's disrespectful. 
And, and so the relationship that the person feels within their adult self towards that child self, you know, is, um, is, is painful, but it is a repetition of, you know, what your childhood actually was like and, and doing that parenting piece again. And, and so I guess to come back to the question at hand of, you know, three years later, um, you know, I'm, I'm really starting to connect. Yes, that makes a lot of sense to me because it does take time to even develop an awareness mm -hmm. that there's a child to develop an appreciation for her presence or his presence mm -hmm. to unpack the ways in which your adult is responding to this child, which rarely do we start from a place of love and compassion when there's been, you know, trauma, abuse, and neglect. Um, and so it does, it, it can take years to get to a place where you feel embracing of her and responsive and wanting to care for her in the way that she's wanted for decades. Right. Yeah. And this doesn't mean that you're a bad person. No. Okay. I think so many times when exactly this happens, Dr. Ashley, a lot of times then you can come back to yourself and say, like, mm -hmm. what's wrong with me? Look at how terrible yeah. I am that I am yeah. like hating and rejecting and sometimes even wanting to hurt right. the child part. What does this say about me? Does this mean that I'm not a loving person? Mm -hmm. And so over and over and over again, it's so important to not judge your reaction know that it is there for a reason and when you allow yourself usually with a safe other who is very likely a therapist right that can hold that space for you mm -hmm. you can explore why you feel that way towards that child so maybe as a child if you were abused or neglected you know the only way that you could make sense out of that scenario was to blame yourself right? Not lovable or look at this bad thing that I caused mom or dad to do, right? If I would have only been this way, then I would be more lovable. And you yeah. internalize that. So if it's not healed and you're an adult, and then you go to connect with that child, that beginning space is going to be that you're going to repeat that rejection, mm -hmm. all right? Exactly. And then, yeah, so we have to then work on helping you to understand, like, is a child ever responsible, mm -hmm. you know, for the behavior of their, you know, adult parents, mm -hmm. you know, did yeah. this really make sense now from an adult perspective, maybe it felt that way from a child perspective, but does your adult mm -hmm. knowledge kind of still feel that way? Right. So there's a lot of unraveling that then happens mm -hmm. before your adult self can be able to embrace that child in a loving way, even though you're a very loving adult to others, right, right. this very complicated internal intrapersonal relationship has to get worked on piece by piece by piece that can take a lot of years. Yeah. And I think, you know, if we extend this to external relationships with others, I mean, we happen a lot where people are very, very kind, loving people, and they're able to interact really well with other adults, but maybe when they're with a child and that child's behavior doesn't make sense or it's challenging or, um, you know, it, it's very intense, sometimes you can see these incredibly loving parents that they don't know how to respond. They don't know what's going on. And in once, you know, the the parent is able to understand the child and the development and, you know, what's really going on, then they can be loving. So a lot of this work is, is what we're doing internally. We're having your adult self better understand, you know, the needs of this child, why those needs make sense from her little perspective and appreciating her experience as a child so that you can step in in that loving way. But all of that takes time. It, yeah. it takes time. Yeah. I'm going to add one more piece, if it's okay, you know, as we're, as we're talking about this and we're, we're talking a lot about getting the adult ready to be able to embrace the child in a healthy way. And if you think about it, sometimes that child part doesn't feel safe with your adult part yet 
to come forward. That's right. Okay. If you are detached and you're neglecting yourself or you're responding to her or his needs through things like food or alcohol, you know, mm -hmm. to kind of numb out, it, this part doesn't feel safe yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like why would it come forward only to step into an interpersonal relationship that's repeating the same mm -hmm. abusive or dysfunctional dynamics of the past? Okay. So sometimes when we go in, um, I've had this happen with many clients, when you go to try to connect up with that inner child, they might start eventually peeking out <laughs> from kind of- Literally sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, in the literally from like <laughs> behind the couch or sometimes it's behind my couch in my office. Uh -huh. And that makes sense because yeah. it hasn't okay. been safe, okay? okay. So, Three years into therapy, as this um, member was talking about, you know, seems like a really, really long time. Mm -hmm. But if you look at this, the trust building, the helping the adult become healthy, you know, the reworking of what's happened in your history, like all of this takes time and it's layer by layer by layer. So mm -hmm. what I would say is be patient, mm -hmm. be consistent. Okay. Yes work to explore and get yourself healthy so that you can approach that child with love and compassion and then eventually bring your loving self forward into this past relationship but in the here and now in a way that's going to be healing and reparative yeah. and and just part of you becoming whole in the way that mm -hmm. you never were before because mm -hmm. of the deficiencies that you experienced in the past it's like right. a beautiful happening it really is. And I want to circle back to a word that you said that is so important and it really can make or break this process, which is consistency. Ah. You know, if this is an inconsistent uh, relationship where you intermittently are responsive, sometimes you're responsive and sometimes you're neglectful and sometimes you're critical, guess what? That little girl inside or that little boy inside, they're smart. They're going to say, you know, I'm not so sure I want to take this risk because this time you were nice, but I've learned that sometimes you're nice, but sometimes you're not. And I don't know that I want to take that risk right now. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very consistent. And this is true in any relationship. Mm -hmm. You want trust in a relationship. The, the way in which you show up not only has to be kind and respectful, it has to be consistent. Mm -hmm. So you know, continuing to stay curious, like you were saying, Dr. Julie, continuing to stay compassionate and available mm -hmm. is how that little girl is going to come out more and more and not only tell you how she's feeling, but what she's needing because she's starting to trust that you will respond and that she can get her needs met in this relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Really, really beautiful. So, yeah. um, yeah. This work is wonderful and, it and really is. difficult and it takes time, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really happy that um, the individual that asked this question is doing this work. Mm -hmm. Please try to commend yourself for doing this work three years in and don't judge yourself yeah. for doing this work three years in. It means that you're really at a deep place within yes, yourself right. to do this work. It means that you're probably in a very right. trusting therapeutic relationship with the person that you're working mm -hmm. with individually. Mm -hmm. And um, if you continue consistently, even though you might be scared, even though mm -hmm. it might feel overwhelming at times, to keep working on it, then that child inside is going to feel your love and, mm -hmm. and that child inside is going to uh, really work to step forward as well. I was just thinking of um, a phrase that I use a lot when I'm working with parents or giving a parenting talk. And I'll say, you know, kids don't need us to be perfect. They need us to be present. And those words just went through my mind as you were talking, Julie, because I think even within the relationship with our inner child, you know, that young part of us isn't needing us to perfectly respond all the time, but she does need to know that when she comes forward, we'll say, I see you, I hear you, you know, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Let me go back to my therapist and, and talk that out. Let me get some books. Let me go listen to some Circle of Hope videos and I'm gonna come back with you when I get that information. Yeah. So 
it's the same process inside. We don't have to know it all and have all the right answers, but we do have to be willing to go get them. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. So I hope that, yeah, yeah hope that helped. I'm sure that there's going to be many more questions regarding this deeper work and that's okay. Please keep asking it because it gives us the opportunity to know really where you're at relative to this and then to be able to jump in and in an even more meaningful way, answer your questions mm -hmm. so that we can work to make these really abstract concepts as concrete and step-by-step -step as possible. So thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Very good.